Lincoln believes B2B marketing can be B2B brilliant, B2B bold, and B2B breakthrough. How? With a platform purpose built to make B2B marketing mean more for your business. A platform with tools to help you build better relationships with your key customers, to boost your buyer's journey while building your brand. A platform with trusted data and lead generation you need to beat your KPIs, drive ROI, and stand out amongst the competition. And with the targeting tools on LinkedIn, you can reach your precise audience right down to their job title, company name, location, and more to make sure your ads are always seen by those who matter. So let's get ready to be too boldly go where no marketer has gone before because LinkedIn is where B2B is everything you can be. Rethink your B2B marketing ads and get a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash mpn to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash mpn. Terms and conditions apply. Entrepreneurs Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship, so the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs, and how we learn from adversity. Every week, I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneurs Enigma. Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneurs Enigma podcast. I'm Seth. Today, I am honored with having Mike McHowitz, the prolific business author, funny guy online. He, <laughs> you are the author of one, two, three, four, five, six, and then some additions beyond that. Books on business and saving people from entrepreneurial poverty. It's a very good tagline. I like that one. How's it going, Mike? It's going well, Seth. Thank you. And also, if you go to his site, you have by far the best headshots imaginable out there. <laughs> and, I, and I found one, and I'm like, because on our album art, I like to find one that isn't just, you know, kind of the head. So I found one of you pointing. I'm like, that's perfect. I use that. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm tired of the standard ones, you know, all the time. I get it. They're cool. Yeah. But I wanted to do something a little different occasionally. Yeah, so Mike, um, since I, before we started recording, I said I have every version and every book that, he, uh, that he's put out. Because I have a tendency to buy every version, uh, all the books, because I'm a fan and I enjoy reading them. Me too. But then every type of format, because I want to have it in every different kind of format for when I want to consume it. And luckily, between two out of the three formats sync together, and the paperback is just antiquated, so let's not get into that. But, um, Mike, how did you get started in all this? I mean, you have a bunch of companies right now, but you are yeah. the consummate entrepreneur. And you're also trying to eradicate entrepreneurial poverty. poverty so, yeah. how did this get all get started? Well, I've been an entrepreneur my entire adult life. Like ever since college, I've been running businesses, not well wow. necessarily, I've been running <laughs> businesses. But then I had a couple of like early successes in my late twenties. I sold one business to private equity. Wow. In my early thirties, I had a, a big sale to a Fortune 500. So I sold these two companies, and I was like, oh my god, now I got figured out. Admittedly, I didn't know. But I'd become totally douchey. Oh no! The, oh no! Not that. Yeah, I thought it was totally God's gift to entrepreneurship. I would be the guy that would be on Facebook or Instagram saying, "I make millions, and you should too." Follow mm. my system, like that bullshit. Like, yeah, I, I believed that. And oh, then no. my next business, I was an angel investor, and I lost everything. Oh, it was sucks! So bad. I lost my house. I lost my possessions. Everything. I didn't lose my family. Well, that's but, good. Yeah, but it was the wake up call of the century that. I didn't know really anything about entrepreneurship. And I endeavored to devote my life to the study of entrepreneurship. Maybe now I know 1%. Like I still know very yeah. little. But everything I learn, I first apply to my own businesses, test them out. And then I, I want to empower others. I want others to be able to move their businesses forward and be successful using these methods. And the last little part of this, why it's so important to me, is every I used to say, you know, small business is the backbone of the economy. Well, that's that's bullshit. It's not. <laughs> small business is the economy. It is. Think about any company on this planet. They were small at some point. When you think about it, small, small SMBs go up to what? Is it 20 million? Yeah. That's uh, not exactly, uh, in my mind, that's not exactly a small business. Oh, yeah. 25 million is the definition by the SBA. There's, a, there's 30 million small businesses in the U.S., a little bit more than that. 97% um, are small business, under 25 million. But every single one started small. Yeah. You know, Amazon out of the garage, Google with the little venture capital. 
and they had to get traction. So mm -hmm. small business is the only type of business. That's so true. That's so true. And so you, so you had your floundering, which I think a lot of us entrepreneurs have. Yeah. Some worse than others. I mean, you apparently had one of the bad ones. Um, and then, so you've documented, I mean, in, in your story, in most of your books, you recount the story, your daughter and the piggy bank and all yeah. that stuff. And it's like, it makes you almost want to cry, but <laughs> smile because your daughter's a, a godsend. And that's such a sweet thing for a kid to do. Yeah. Most kids are schmucks. We're going to take a quick break, hear from our sponsors, and get right back to the show. LinkedIn believes B2B marketing can be B2 brilliant, B2 bold, and B2 breakthrough. How? With a platform purpose-built to make B2B marketing mean more for your business. A platform with tools to help you build better relationships with your key customers, to boost your buyer's journey while building your brand. A platform with trusted data and lead generation you need to beat your KPIs, drive ROI, and stand out amongst the competition. And with the targeting tools on LinkedIn, you can reach your precise audience right down to their job title, company name, location, and more to make sure your ads are always seen by those who matter. So let's get ready to be too boldly go where no marketer has gone before because LinkedIn is where B2B is everything you can be. Rethink your B2B marketing ads and get $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash MPN. Terms and conditions apply. So... <laughs> of your books, and I know you just released the second edition of Clockwork, right? That's the, that's the new one, right? Yeah, I just released the new version. What's your, which one's your favorite? Which one's your favorite baby? Can we do that? My, fa my favorite baby that I like the most is the Pumpkin Plan, because yeah. um, it's one. still pretty raw, and yeah. uh, it's a great service. The most successful is, or the most popular, I should say, is Profit First. I really, because I'm a marketer, I really like Get Different. I oh, love I love it. that book too. I was very proud, very proud of that book when I, I came out with it. I think I missed I, I, on the I, I, title. I don't know if I should have titled it Get Different. I think people think that means get outrageous, and that's not the goal here. No, it's but the audio book was pretty outrageous. The audio book was a fun listen because when you read a book and you read the book on Kindle or you read the book otherwise, but when you hear that, you read the book. Yeah. And most, and there's authors that can read their books, and there's authors that read their books and shouldn't have read their book. <laughs> I can name a few people that have listened to their books. I'm like, why didn't they have someone else read this book? Yeah, but Mike, you and, and this, this man is a compliment for better or for worse with everything of Gary V. But you and Gary V, you're actually better at reading your book than Gary V. But you have these little anecdotes, that, anecdotes, not anecdotes, whatever that word, that yeah. um make the audiobook so much more worth it. So every so that's the reason why I've bought at least the Kindle book of all your books, and then I have the audiobooks because there's tidbits in there that you're not going to get anywhere else, and it's fantastic. You know what's so interesting is when I'm reading a book. First of all, I do all my reading standing for what it's worth. When I go to the studios, I always throw them off. They're like, okay, we set up your chair and here's your book to read. I'm like, I do it standing. They're like, oh my God, you're the guy? <laughs> it just brings a different level of energy in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I'm actually standing right now. In regards to those riffs and so forth, I after I write a book, like a book sits in the publishing department for almost a year. Like the oh, manuscript wow. is done and it just sits and sits. So I'm out there doing the work, I'm sharing it with people that are mm. using one of our service companies and I'm learning new stuff. I'm like, my gosh, so many new stories pop up from the day the book is written until the day the book is on shelves that often becomes some of the stuff I riff about and share. That's awesome. So what is the best thing about being an entrepreneur in your mind since you've done it for so long? Yeah, I think the best thing for me and I think for most entrepreneurs is it really is the ultimate form of expression. You mm. can be you all out and make money at it. But people are like, but dude, like someone sells toilet paper. How can they be them? Like it's such a, a commodity lane business. Well, maybe someone's into environmental responsibility mm -hmm. and is recycling. Maybe they can use that as a platform for expressing that interest of theirs. And I think this is true for any industry. We all can express ourselves so well through it and build a lifestyle of comfort and service. I love it. And also there's these new toilet paper, this made out bamboo. And has no inner roll, so that when you're done, you're oh, done. Oh, that's awesome. So the stuff about innovative toilet paper. Yeah, there you go. But then what's the scariest thing? I mean, you, you live the scary of being an entrepreneur. Well, I guess the scariest thing, it, depend, it depends. I was just watching this movie recently called The Alpinist. It's a guy who climbs mm -hmm. mountains. And like this guy is so into it. His name was Mark Andre Legrand or something. I can't remember his name exactly. But what's so fascinating was he didn't 
care about being famous. He, and he's the best at it. He doesn't care about um, being filmed. He just does it for the l- love of it. Mm. But he's putting himself at super risk. Like he could f- fall. He could die. Yeah. Well, with, with entrepreneurship, I think the risk is the collapse. But at the same time, the people who are doing it for the right reason, they're not doing it to get rich and make money. Listen, I have nothing against rich. I, I like rich. I've been poor. <laughs> I've been rich. Or I've been broke and I've been rich. It's probably a better choice of words. Rich is better. There's no question about it. But I think when that's the primary goal, it's all about acquisition and accumulation. And that's, Mm -hmm. to me, that's losing the plot. But there is a risk that whatever you pursue that speaks to you doesn't resonate with the community and that collapses. Profitability is sustainability. You need to make money. And when Mm -hmm. the market doesn't resonate with it, that's the big risk that you have something that serves you but is not serving the market. I just want to put the little asterisk in there. If you do something that serves the market but doesn't serve you, that's the greatest folly of all. It that's is, just making yeah. money, but not making money and making your heart sing. And I, and I think that's what a lot of entrepreneurs who do it for the wrong reasons feel. They, they and they burn out, and they often those are the ones that I feel like fail the worst because they're not in love with what, what they're doing. I right, mean, right, and they become jumpers. They're like, ah, I'm not making money. I, I gotta try something else. It doesn't become sustainable, yeah. and it's not fulfilling. You're always in the brink. You know, I think the ultimate thing is to go in and say, I can't believe I get to do what I get to do today. And I'm getting paid to boot. That's the position you want to be in. And I wish for every entrepreneur to make all the money they dream of. I think they more than deserve it. Thank you for your contribution to our society, small business owner. But start off with your heart. That's brilliant. So what is the most important thing to carry with you all the time? Well, I'm kind of leaning into a theme here. I, just because I looked at my desk, it came right to mind. There is a saying attributed to Oscar Wilde. It's questionable if he's the one who had this saying, but it says, be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. The oh, emulation market uh, is so big. Like, you know, I'm not really into Instagram. You're like, hey, I got to see something on LinkedIn. I actually don't even manage my own LinkedIn. I, <laughs> my colleague here does it. But what I see is a lot of influencers is the term now yeah. that say, be like me. Um, I, I'm I'm successful in some capacity or I'm happy in some way or I have stuff in some acquired in some form, replicate me. And I don't, I don't know if that's really the good model is the replication model. I think we really need to lean into that definition of our own selves and be so comfortable in our own skin. And I think it starts off not by cloning others, but really investigating who we are. And then, as I said, use the business as a form of expression. I love that. So here's a question. Everyone's talking about imposter syndrome. Everyone's like, I can't believe this person has imposter syndrome. They're excellent. Have oh. you ever experienced imposter syndrome while building one of your many thousands of businesses? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, have I experienced imposter syndrome? Um, or maybe a different flavor of it. I don't yeah. think I sat there and say, I shouldn't be here, or I'm experiencing mm-hmm. a success I don't deserve, or people think I'm one thing, but I'm really another. I don't think I've done that. That being said, there's been degrees of this isn't fully me. So mm. I, I used to be in forensic investigations. That was the company that was acquired. Ooh. Robert Half was our acquirer, and that's a Fortune 500. Yeah. When I started that business, I, I got into it because it was cool. I was watching CSI on TV. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, that'd be cool to, to go to buildings and then investigate all the, uh, the computer equipment and pull out evidence, and that'd be yeah. cool. So I started because it was cool, but then over time – I wasn't resonating with the cool factor anymore. And I had to find a purpose or reason for myself. And uh, remember the term it came up was, oh, well, I want to be a purveyor of the truth. Like mm. when I do these investigations, I just want to find out what the truth is and then hand it over to the attorneys to mill through or whatever. Yeah. And that, that kept me going, but it wasn't wholly who I was. So really not, that wasn't imposter syndrome saying I was faking it, Yeah, but it wasn't totally who I was. And I, I think part of it, Part of the lesson I learned for myself is when I'm not fully me, uh, to listen to that and keep seeking the full me and finding ways to ex- express it. In fact, that's part of the reason why I wanted to sell the company was like, I don't love this because I'm not really me. But I, I did try to push my square self into that round hole by saying, well, what part of me does resonate with it? And it's just being a purveyor of the truth. So it helped me sustain. So maybe partial imposter syndrome. Yeah. I, I love that because it, a lot of people think, Oh, it's imposter syndrome. I'm an, an imposter, but a lot yeah. of people don't realize that there's a is it's a spectrum. Like yeah, there you go. Everything, a, yeah, is, everything is a spectrum nowadays. Everything. Everything's. Everything, I'm on the spectrum. Everything's the spectrum. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, 
Mike, I know you do have to run, but where is yeah. the best place? Where is your watering hole? Because, I mean, obviously you said, you know, you don't manage the LinkedIn, but, like, where do you hang out online? Like, where if people want to reach out to where you? Where do I hang out? Yeah, yeah. so if anything, it's on Twitter. Um, uh, Twitter. Do, oh, wow. I love it because it's short. It's quippy. So yeah. it's Mike Michalowicz at Twitter. And then my website, which is the I, – I actively respond to comments on my blog and stuff, is MikeMotorbike.com. That's Mike probably Motorbike. the easiest starting point because no one can spell Michalowicz. Oh, God, I've tried. I, it's, impo- <laughs> it's impossible. When I was in grade school, the, one of the first nicknames I got was Mike Motorbike. And I have hundreds of others. They are so profane, I can't even repeat them on your show. Like, oh, no, you, you know, you, And I couldn't you, buy the domains. It's like you can't use that word in the domain. I'm like, Really? You can't but, really. It's no, fashion? no, you could. You could. I'm trying to be dramatic here. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, if, but <laughs> if you want to hear some of them, go to his, go to his website and press the little speaker. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And those are I the per- ones that are, those are like PG 13. That's not even the the real good ones. Ooh. But um, MikeMotorbike.com. Go there. Plus, there's a little uh, Easter egg when you type yes, this. Yes, I just in. saw that. I was like, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun, right? So go there. Uh, that brings you to my site. All my links are there. My books are there. That's I'm great. a podcaster too. There, so you can everything see there. So Mike. Thank you so much for being on the show. This has been so, this has been such a joy. I, this, I'm, this has I, been fun. Thanks. Seth. This is a fun, quick podcast. I love it. I Thank, love it. All right, Mike. Have a wonderful afternoon, and we'll see everyone next week. That was a great show. Hey, if you're enjoying Entrepreneurs Enigma, please give us a review on the podcast trusted of your choice. We're on all of them, and these reviews really help others find the show. Also, if you're getting value from the show and want to buy me a coffee. Go to the show notes and click on the link to help me stay awake while I bring you more great episodes to your ears. That's in the show notes, and I look forward to the next episode. Take care, guys. Media hopes you have enjoyed this episode. This podcast is one of the many great shows on the MPN Marketing Podcast Network. This podcast is part of the MPN, the Marketing Podcast Network. Another great MPN podcast you'll enjoy is PR Talk, a show that digs into the modern side of public relations through interviews with thought leaders, authors, and the media on PR Talk with the Marketing Podcast Network. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.